I used to wear fancy dresses and high heels, but not anymore. I'm 24, 24 years. So you're gonna spend a good part of your 20s in war? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I have to do this for my country. I have to give what I can give. It's pretty important to, to let the world see what's going on. You know, I think nobody knew Syria, even on the map, before this revolution, and now everybody knows what's going on in Syria, and that's because of the press covering what's going on. That's really important. Somebody has to see all this. Somebody has to know what this monster is doing to us and to his own people. And I'm making sure that somebody's gonna know. All the people in the world are going to see this, hopefully. See us suffering. See the civilians suffering. I mean, it's not a way to do this. It's wrong. You saw a man die five minutes ago. Yeah. Do you worry that could happen to you? <laughs> well, we're not thinking in this mentality anymore. It just, this is something we have to do. I mean, so many people, so many girls died in the kitchen, like doing a dishwasher or keeping something. And we have like a mortar shell or a shrapnel coming through the window and they're like drop dead. So what's the point? Why should I die cheap? So I have to go. I have to do this. I'm not afraid of death. I am Omar Hattab. I am 32 years old. My nickname is Muawiyah. Uh, I was a civilian before uh, the revolution started, but now I'm fighting the Free Syrian Army against uh, Bashar al-Assad regime. I joked that I always keep one bullet left in my yes. gun for myself. You must keep one bullet here in Syria. You keep it for yourself, it's better than you, the regime catch you. I will guarantee that for you. You must keep one bullet. So you can die fastly. They tortured me very hard. Uh, there is uh, too many kinds of torture. Uh, for example, one time, they carry me two men's, one from my legs and the other from my neck, and throw me up and down from the ceiling to the ground. The most bad thing when you hear the sounds of the men have been tortured, and you don't know if you are the next or not. What do they accuse you of? Yes, uh, because I say freedom. It's a very big crime here. You know, they told us in uh, the prison, can you imagine another one can lead this country? Only Bashar can lead this country. And they believe it. They don't say it like that. They believe it, that only Bashar al-Assad can lead this country. No one can lead it. Well, because he's genius, you see, how he turned the, the country. Before that, we, oh, we feel bad. There is a lot of people on the streets, so oh, that's not good. Look now, it's empty. You can walk like you want. This is the genius. Bashar al-Assad.
you're not safe anywhere. I've got my friend, she has been arrested for so long. Last week we received that she's dead because she was tortured, raped. It makes me sick. I'd rather die. Really, I'd rather die than let them have me for five minutes. Before this, all of this starts, before the revolution, I used to teach English in school. And well, sometimes I think like it's just a nightmare, all this that I'm going through right now. If I go to sleep and wake up and everything will be fine. I will go back to school and teach. What about this building? Do you know what happened here? No one's know. And no one want to know. We don't know how many people left there and there. And they have dreams, they have their lives, they, they're laughing sometimes, they're crying sometimes. All that's in now. All that's in. This is the center of the city. You know what's the meaning, the center of the city? Can you imagine Wall Street like that? If the government come by voting, no problem. What the people want, I with it. I like the government, I don't like it, but it must be democracy. Not from father to son. And the animals, to hit Bashar. Look, she feels safety here with us. <laughs> We're not terrorists like they say. In this place, my friend died. It was well, the first time that he puts on a mask on his face. Because he decided to be an FSA. So nobody could recognize him. We got one guy wounded and he wanted to help that guy, but nobody could cross to that bleeding guy in the middle of the street because of the bullets all over the place and security forces and like <laughs> but he has the guts and he went for it and other guys got encouraged and ran to help him out and he dragged the body and his friends helped him once he got to that point one bullet went through his chest and he he died. The funny thing is that our friend was standing in that corner and video, video typing the whole thing. And he didn't know that it was our friend because he had his mask on. So the guys grabbed his body and tried to take him to the nearest field hospital. 
and they took off the mask and it was him. And he just shouted. That's it. That's it. That's it. He was like my brother. He's just 19. Too bad that they had to hold the responsibility as men because they're only teenagers. I'm not gonna forget this boy. And I'm going to continue to fight as he did. I'm not gonna give up. Even if I had to die, I'm gonna do this. Nobody had an idea about politics here because we don't talk about that. We're not allowed to talk about politics, really, even with our families. I cannot open a conversation about politics with my mother or father because we're just so much scared that somebody might overhear us and the next day somebody might knock our door and arrest the whole family just for talking about politics. Syria is, is destroyed now, it's true. It's true, but now we've got one thing that's worthy that we can talk and express our opinions about anything. I mean, that's really worth all this sacrifice because we had enough from not being able to say how we feel or what are our opinions and not being able to participate in this country. And now we can. We're gonna build this whole country again from scratch, from zero. And it doesn't matter how long does this last or how much damage it's gonna be because really all the males and females of this country are willing to build it again and even better than it was before. Proud to be Syrian because Syria is going, to be, is going to be better without that criminal. Yeah, it's beautiful without this guy running this country. So we're working on that. Yeah, we do. The animals, maybe this cat is more important for the Americans, more the Syrian people. Because I'm sure that the animals have rights in America more than the people here. They don't care about it. So what? Maybe if you're filming three or four cats and put it on YouTube, maybe one million will watch the, the video, will see the video in one hour. But they don't care about the people. Maybe after the Americans see that, they found there is a cat here in Syria. I hope they will help the cats. Maybe we we'll see it. Oh, there is a cat in Syria. So let's go help Syria. Don't care about the woman. Don't care about the cat. At least the cat is an animal. It needs some support. People have said this before. Yes, we feel that. I know it's not real, but it's this close to be real.